Nova York, final do verão. A minha convidada e eu estamos no moderno restaurante que ela mesma escolheu. O maior símbolo da cultura pop americana da atualidade completou 40 anos com um corpinho de 20. É mãe de Lourdes Maria, a quem chama carinhosamente de Lola. Um fenômeno que se mantém na onda há 15 anos foi recentemente indicada para nove dos mais importantes prêmios da MTV americana. Isso por seu último disco, que dizem é seu melhor até hoje, Ray of Light. De frente comigo, Madonna, Luiz, Verônica, Ticone. You've chosen you, yourself, chosen one of your names, Verônica. Why? Who is your Verônica? When did she come? What do you mean I've chosen it? You're chosen. I read that oh, you were... Oh, it's a confirmation. Were... Yes. Yes, because when you have a confirmation, you get to choose your name. Oh, really? And uh, you have to choose from, sa like, saint. they have to be the names of saints or people in the Bible. So I chose Veronica because she wiped the face of Jesus yeah. as he was going to be crucified. And I thought that was very dramatic. So... Are you going to work with um, something about Veronica? You were going to Oh, make uh, I was thinking of doing a remix album called Veronica Electronica. Mm -hmm. It's an alter ego. Yes. She's very goth. Do you still She's have this black. idea or not? Um, well, yes, but I'm going to need to enlist the services of William Orbit, who is currently working on someone else's record. So maybe down the line. You are a very bold woman. You've never been bashful to try new roles. Which of them gave you the greatest pleasure? Which has taught you most? New roles, you mean yes, in movies? Yes, you have been lots of women, I think so. I've been observing you for so long. Well, I, I guess I've been just trying to figure out who I am and changing and growing and I, I think I like who I am now the best. The best now? Yeah. But do you have uh, uh, nice um, memories? of many of your roles. Which part of your life did you enjoy the most? Now. Now? Mm. Definitely. Definitely. And does it have, does it have been to, with, um, that's because of your maternity, do you think so? Well, uh, because I don't want to live in the past. I mean, I've, I can appreciate all times in my life, but I like who I am now the best, because I'm smarter now than I used to be, and I'm more fulfilled as a human being. And, Obviously, I, I mean, I love being a mother, and so that has a lot to do with it. You are the first megastar of the remarkable global village, um, as told us Marshall McLuhan. You've come up and blossomed with satellites, video clips, mega shows, and internet. This is interactivity. You provoke the public response. Is it very difficult to always depend on everybody's approval? I don't. You don't? No. When you are an artist, you don't uh, need the public approval? Well, I think it, it helps to be popular because it means you're going to get another job as far as being an actress is concerned. But as a singer and a songwriter, I'm not sitting in the studio writing music hoping that I'm going to get people's approval. I can't think of that. Well, but if they don't I, like one of your albums, you well, have a they, problem, I've been and don't that. you? I've made records that people haven't liked. That's okay. And what happened? To you, to Life yourself. Life goes on. I mean, there's, I, I, I have an audience of people that have been really faithfully my fans and, you know, some records sell more than others. That's life. That's the fabric of life. I mean, you have to deal with that. Yes, uh, because I was going to tell you uh, that you have also been a lot censored, prohibited and criticized. When have you learned to deal with disaffection or haven't you at all? You don't think about it. Um, when have I learned to deal with disaffection? Yes. With, um, with the criticism, prohibition and everything. Well, after it happens a few times and, you know, you realize that you're still going to wake up the next day and life goes on, you just, you learn to not take it so seriously because, you know, being popular is great, but you can't get attached to the idea of being popular because it's not going to always be that way, especially if you're an artist and you're political or provocative or um, a pioneer in any way, shape or form. You're not going to be popular all the time. So um, I think it's more important to look at the big picture 
and not get caught up in the details, you know. Oh, my movie's a big hit. Oh, that means that I'm a great person. Oh, my movie's not. I mean, you can't get attached to those things. It's, I mean, everyone wants to be successful, but it's more important to be a happy person and to be a good person, so. fazer uma pausa para o comercial, eu gostaria de mostrar uma opinião da feminista e pensadora americana Camille Palha, que já foi fã da Madonna, mas depois a criticou. Camille Palha é uma pessoa polêmica, que assume sua homossexualidade e defende um novo tipo de feminismo. Eu fiz essa entrevista pelo canal GNT, na Globosat. Veja depois o que a Madonna pensa da Camille Palha. Did you get laid with Madonna because you had oh, such no. a, you had a, such a road size and, um, a relationship? <laughs> you loved her and she loved you. Suddenly she was saying terrible things about you and vice versa. Was not uh, I never, after, an after show this? I, I've never met Madonna. Okay, Madonna. Oh, really? Madonna. Ever, ever. All the media has tried to get me together with Madonna. Every possible thing. We've had major magazines. Esquire magazine has tried to bring us together. HBO, the cable channels, tried to bring us together. She's refused to have anything to do with me. No. Um, uh, but that's not my attitude anyway. I, I have a very, uh, I have the attitude of a devotee toward the great stars. They are like goddesses to me, and I am like um, a, a priest. Camille Palha some years ago and after telling me that you represented the future of feminism she said she was disappointed because you conceded to marketing when was she right she was disappointed because I what you conceded to marketing she said that conceded to yes marketing. Uh, well uh, she, she thought at the very beginning that you were really the future of feminism Mm -hmm. And then she thought that you were pretending or uh, making yourself for the marketing, that what she meant. Mm -hmm. And so now I am asking you... I where think she, she was upset with me because I didn't do an interview with her. That was a problem? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> she can be very nasty. Yes, she can. But and so unhappy people are nasty people. <laughs> ter a entrevista de Madonna para uma jornalista da televisão brasileira. Neste bloco, Madonna fala da mudança de material girl para mulher espiritual. You've always had a finger on reli religiosity, even if it was only as an affront. Not anymore. Now it seems to me you are really immersed in religiosity, as if the material girl had turned into the spiritual girl. Did you imagine that this would happen one day, or expected for it? Well, I. I can't see into the future, and I can't say that 10 years ago I knew that I would arrive at the pe place that I'm, I'm at, but when people coined the phrase material girl, that was, I mean, the actual song itself was meant to be ironic, not to be taken in a literal way. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm the farthest thing from being a materialistic person, and I've, I've never been a materialistic person, so I was always amused that that was my, amused and irritated that that was my title. Um, and I think I've always been searching for my own spirituality and I mean with age and experience and you know the places that life has taken me I think that I have a better idea of of what my spirituality is Which ray 
of light fell over you and generated an album. Was it a moment, a fact, a sign, a signal? Mm. What was it? It's all of those things. I mean, what inspired the record? Is that what you're asking yes, me? Yes, but especially Everything. the ray of light. But having a child, um, um, and just really being able to, I mean, surviving the entertainment business and accomplish. Is it hard? Is it hard to survive too? I think it's hard, period, to survive. I think that it's hard to survive and be um, a and to maintain innocence and, and joy and um, to always be hungry for, for things. I mean, it's, it's hard to not become cynical in the world that we live in. Um, and I think we live in a very judgmental society. Um, and it's hard to separate yourself from that and not get caught up in also being a judgmental person, judgmental of yourself, judgmental of other people. Um, so. I think Ray of Light was kind of like my way of celebrating having survived everything that I'd gone through and coming out on the other side of it and still feeling hopeful about life. This is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's a special moment. Yes, it is. This ray of light, you transform your music and get closer to the other side of Earth is that really so? East stays with the spirit, while West realizes itself in the material? So what are you asking me? Well, I'm asking you, uh, when you, uh, when you did this, you became more um, involved with the East culture mm -hmm. than the, the West. Eastern philosophy. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, east is for spirit and West is for material and that's it? No, I don't think that the line gets drawn that hard. I mean, I think there are a lot of really incredibly spiritually enlightened people that live in the material world. I mean, I, I live in the material world. I, I, you can be a spiritual person and like to go shopping at Prada. I mean, you just can't get attached to things. Do you? Do you? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> and then? Did you finish this? Um, and then what? Talking about uh, spirituality and Well, I, I think that you can choose all different kinds of spiritual life. You can go and live in a monastery in Tibet and you can meditate 24 hours a day. That's one way to be spiritual. You can give up all of the material part of your life and you can do, you know, what Mother Teresa did, you know, and just your whole life is devoted to the service of other people. You can also live in the world, in the modern world, and hopefully, you know, help make the world a better place in your own way. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to be spiritual. Your body is still very, very pretty, just less muscled. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> You've changed it into yoga. Why? I've... Yoga. You are practicing yoga, yes. aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why, that, that's why I, t I, I told you I think you have a very nice figure. Uh -huh. So, why did you change for, uh, from weights and lots of muscles to yoga? Um, well, lots of reasons. I mean, I've been working out like a maniac and running and going to the gym. And I did that for years. And I, I just, after I had a baby, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I like yoga because yoga isn't, isn't about, I mean, your body changes as a result of doing yoga, but yoga is much more for your mind and your soul than it is for your body. Um, because, it, because it addresses all areas of life. It's not just about what you look like on the outside. It's how you feel. And, um, you know, the poses that you do during yoga are not the most important thing. The most important thing is your attitude about life. You know, having compassion for other people, not judging other people, not being attached to material things. That's really the essence of yoga. You have learned Sanskrit, one of the most ancient languages of India, in mm -hmm. order to record one of your songs, Shanti. Yeah. 
Could you sing me a mantra? <laughs> Could I what? Could you sing me a mantra? Because I, according to what I've heard, this song is based on one. It's a prayer. Prayer. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it's a mantra is the name, isn't it? Oh. When you repeat one sound, it's like a prayer. Um, I could say a line from the song, but a mantra is, you know, everyone has a different mantra. You could, you know, Prada could be your mantra. I'm sorry to keep bringing that up. But, um, I mean, you, whatever is important to you could, is your mantra, you know? Yeah, yeah but it, me, by myself, I, I pray every night one part of uh, a prayer, mm -hmm. a very Catholic one. And I don't know if I believe in it or if it's just a mantra for sleeping, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. what you mean too? That it can be. I mean, a mantra could be a prayer. It could be of a spiritual nature. It could be of a non-spiritual nature. Um, I think everyone, I think it's a very personal thing. The other day during an interview, you declared that when you feel sad, you listen to Portuguese music. Is it true? What music? Well, as I certainly have a lot in the past. Um, in fact, when I was giving birth, I was listening to um, Cesaria Evora. Cesaria Evora mm -hmm. from Cabo Verde. Yeah, she's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also said you listen to Brazilian music. Is mm -hmm. it true? Which one? Joao Gilberto and Astrid Gilberto. Yes, Joao yeah. Gilberto and Astrid Gilberto. Yeah. How do you like them? I love them. Brasil, meu Brasil, brasileiro, mulato e zoneiro. Vou cantar-te nos meus versos. Brasil, samba, que tá bamboleio, que faz gingar o Brasil do meu amor, terra de nosso Senhor. No próximo bloco, Madonna fala sobre o significado, ou sobre a falta de significado, de ter 40 anos de idade. De volta e de frente com Madonna. Neste bloco, a cantora americana de origem italiana fala sobre sua vontade de ser atriz. E é aqui, neste momento que começam as perguntas pessoais e que Madonna começa a escapar. Seria autodefesa? Confira. What represents getting to the 40s? Is it just a number or much more than this? I mean, when you become, when you become 40, you become for the others uh, because of the sound of the number or is more than that? Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> I'll try again. I'm 50, and it sounds terrible, the sound of the number. I don't feel like. I'm asking you if being 40 is just a sound of a number. It, well, it, it is a number. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you don't feel like 40? That's what no, I'm asking. No, I don't. But I don't know. I guess I'm 40. I must feel like it. I feel good. If 40 is good, then I feel, then, I, then 40 is cool. Did you get something for you and lost other things when you became 40 or not? Um, well, soon I'll be able to get that senior citizen half price at the movie theater, <laughs> so I guess I'll be gaining. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. What did I lose? I, I haven't lost anything. I feel better now than I did when I was 20. Yuck, I don't want to be 20 again for nothing. Why not? Because I was so stupid. <laughs> I, I dress better now, too, so. I'm Italian-Brazilian, and I know exactly what this means. You are Italian-American. What does this mean? Being Italian-American. Uh, uh, what does this mean? Uh, what does it mean, this blend? Um, well, that means I'm allowed to lose my temper. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. I mean, Italians are, you know, they're very, you know, traditionally they're very dramatic people. I am. Passionate. Sure. So, and I am. But I'm American too. And the end? Which means I'm forward thinking. So. So? <laughs> so. I am who I am. <laughs> I am what I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> You've grown up without a mother. She died when you were five years old. Did this event have any influence on you, on the mother you have become or not? Well, I think if you grow up without a parent, I think you place a lot of importance on being a good parent, being the parent you never had. I think you try harder maybe, yeah. perhaps. At the same time, you don't have an image to copy, if you know what I mean. That's okay. I don't need Did to Didn't need it? No. How do you deal with the family as an institution? Uh, for instance, your father is alive. Do you have uh, contacts like with uh, cousins, brothers, sisters? Yes. Uh, do you? Yeah. And so, what is a family? What does it mean for you? What, means, what it means for everybody, you know? We get together, we have dinner, we play with each other's children, we, we exchange advice, we tell stories. I mean, it's normal, like everyone else. Well, probably I'm asking because I don't. I don't care about this. I don't care about exactly about family. I think that family you choose, you can choose from your friends. So these will be kind of yes, brother well, and I, I have. There are members of my family that, are, that I consider my friends, and there are friends that I consider my family. So my family consists of both of those things. Do you intend to have another baby? Is it true? Is what true? Well, I heard, I read, I don't know, somewhere, that you were uh, well, intending I've, I've, to have another I've, baby. I don't know. I mean, I've, maybe, maybe not. I'd like to, but you know, I don't know. I can't predict that future either. To you, what represents being an actress? Is it really important? Um, well, I love the, the medium of, I love film, I love the cinema. Um, and I, I think that when you find the right part to do and you're working with a really great director, I think it's a really exciting experience. So, and I enjoy it. And how is it, how is it being an actress? What's the, what's the feeling exactly? It's a combination of things. It's about, it's the feeling of kind of transforming yourself into someone else, but it's also about revealing some small truth of your own self. I mean, it's, it's like a weird synergy. You're, you're someone else, but you're also yourself. It's interesting. Is that what you want? Yeah. Is that, is that what you want? Yeah, that's what I want. Well, here, use this. Go ahead, come on. You're gonna do a thing like that, do it when you're sober. You invested everything you could on Evita. Did, you, did the result fulfill your ex expectations? Yes. Heron has resigned from the army and this we avow. The descomisados are those he is marching with now. That takes me to fashion. Your film promoted the recall of the Dior's style. You and fashion walk together. Prada, <laughs> Gautier, Dolce Gabbana, Versace have always been connected to you, to your shows. Mm -hmm. 
Is fashion a priority in your life? Absolutely. And why? Because I love clothes, and I think clothes and the way you dress is a great way to express yourself. Would you describe yourself as um, um, through the, the way you dress you up? I dress my moods. Sometimes I'm feeling very feminine and very sexy. Sometimes I'm feeling very um, masculine, wear suits or dress like a boy or whatever. I mean, I, that's the great thing about clothes. You know, you can keep changing as your mood changes. Being brunette after so many years of blondness. It's a liberating experience because I don't have any roots that I have to dye. So. Stage has always been described as a sacred place in a magical moment. Mm -hmm. What's your translation for stage? Could you describe me the moment when you step in it? You mean as a performer, a yes, singer? Yes, yes. Or whatever. Well, I think there's something about, about the theater that is more magical than anything I could imagine. Uh, just the, the spontaneity of being in the moment of dealing with the energy of a, of a live audience. There's, that, there's a kind of excitement in the air that you, you can't describe, um, that you can't experience in anything else in life. Do you have a ritual before getting in it? A Are what? you superstitious? Kind of ritual. If ritual. You, yeah, uh, do you have it? Yeah, I pray, do breathing exercises, stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you don't feel uh, red to go, that's it? Exactly. There's a lot of money, a lot of production, promotion and audience involved in shows with mega stars like you. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to perform a pocket show or is mega stardom a one-way road? Yes and no. Mm. <laughs> so please don't be so monosyllabic. Okay. Sorry, I've been hanging around <laughs> two-year-olds too much. Um, um, well, I think I could, I could perform in any kind of environment, small, intimate, or large spectacle. I'm comfortable with both and anything in between. And I think just because you're a megastar doesn't mean that you can't have that experience. You can't have an intimate experience. Volta e de frente com Madonna, que há alguns anos lançou este livro, vai brilhar aí, Sex, e provocou polêmica por todas as partes do mundo. Não posso mostrar as outras fotos. Mostro algumas. Em alguns lugares o livro foi proibido. Madonna, que começou a sua carreira de atriz num filme pornô chamado Um Certo Sacrifício, agora evita tocar no assunto. Eu gostaria que vocês percebessem que ao tocar em sua autopropalada bissexualidade, uma assessora de imprensa pede, dá um grito lá atrás, para que eu faça outra pergunta. Com vocês, Madonna. Sex and Madonna, the world has been trained to associate one issue to other. Now you've come up sweeter and discreet. Has your sexuality also changed? No. Just the appearance of it. I'm just not talking about it. What do you mean? I'm still interested in sex. I'm just not talking about it. That's it. So just appearance changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yep. You declared that your sexual life has begun by the age of 14. After Lourdes Maria, do you think this could be one concern of yours, if you know what I'm talking about? About losing your virginity. Yes, I'm talking about maternity and childhood and mm. your daughter and your feelings about your life and sexual life after Lourdes Maria. Well, 
even though I lost my virginity at a very young age, I was madly in love with my boyfriend and he'd been together for a while, so it wasn't a tragic experience for me. So, you know, I just, I want, you know, my daughter to be educated and know what she's doing. I don't encourage, you know, sex for the sake of sex. If I think that you have to be ready for it and I think it's important that love is there and caring. You have loved men and women. Is it very different? What is the best and the worst in each one of them? Um, <laughs> well, the best and the worst, I mean, those, I don't differentiate. I mean, I don't know what you're asking me. Politics and sex. You admitted being a Democrat supporter. Yeah they would be more connected to the artist. Today, justice is accusing the Democrat symbol, President Clinton. Uh -huh. How do you analyze this moment? You mean about what's happening with yes. the, the... I think it's ridiculous. It's an outrage. It's just a waste of everybody's time. It's stupid. Still, still now, when he declared he was lying before? Who cares? I mean, there's so many more important things going on in the world. It doesn't interest me. Obstructing justice is not important. How do we know he did that? Well, he's, it's all he's speculation. Said it. I don't. I think it doesn't change whether it does not influence whether he's a good president or not. Non-authorized biographies. Do you read yours? I try not to. Why not? Because they're so stupid. Could be funny also. Huh? Mm, not really. What is truth to you? Truth? Yes. What is truth? Would you define it? Um, I don't know how I can define truth. Fearlessness. Is there any place where you like to hang around and where you are able to act naturally and with freedom? Yeah, and with my friends and my family, anywhere they are. At home? Yeah. Generally? At home or visiting my friends, yeah. Last question. Just last question. Oh, there's only one question. Um, may I uh, put you a ping pong, the Oscar, do you want it? Who doesn't? A wedding, do you want it? A wedding? Yes. Maybe. A dream, do you still have it? Many. An idol, do you have it? An idol? No. Why not? Why? <laughs> what is that you can't stand? Thoughtlessness. Prejudice, which is yours? my prejudice. Cowboy boots. Why? <laughs> because I just, just immediately have a bad feeling about someone that wears them. <laughs> the future, how is it? Good. I pray when? Always. My home is in? My heart. New Year's Eve in 2000 will be? A blast. <laughs> Madonna, Madonna. What? Madonna on Madonna. Um, Madonna squared? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Would you define yourself? I don't want to. Why not? No, I don't want to. It's not so, good to do that. Okay, Let thank ask you. Ask other people about me. Thank you very much for your interview. You're welcome. Chega ao fim minha entrevista com Madonna. Eu devo confessar que não foi das que mais me agradaram. Uma experiência, eu diria, diferente. Não é do meu feitio analisar entrevistados. Mas eu vou abrir uma exceção, pois eu sei da curiosidade de todo mundo sobre o fenômeno Madonna. 
andaram me ligando, amigos, perguntando como é que ela é pessoalmente, é simpática, é distante. Gente que eu não conheço e que leu a notícia me perguntou, é inteligente, vive na autodefesa, como é que é? Sem querer julgá-la, dá para dizer que a Madonna tem um eterno tom blasé, confirmado pelo seu enorme staff. Aliás, ela só se movimenta carregando um time de pelo menos 17 pessoas, além da sua filha, Lourdes Maria, gracinha, que chegou ao restaurante assim que terminou a nossa entrevista. A Madonna não permite fotografias e o câmera, dois aliás, indicados por ela, não fazem nenhum close do seu rosto, ou seja, não fecham, não chegam perto ou de qualquer parte do seu corpo. Foi uma experiência não muito fácil, foi, eu diria, difícil para quem já estava acostumado a entrevistas com políticos internacionais ou mesmo com estrelas pop internacionais. E a impressão que ficou é que ela se cansa rápido ao dar uma entrevista ou que não quer refletir sobre nenhum assunto, mesmo os diretamente ligados ao seu trabalho. Eu me sinto livre de falar assim porque ela já fez aquele filme na cama com Madonna para expor todas as opiniões que agora ela nega e diz não ter interesse. Enfim. Eu espero que vocês estejam indo bem para a cama com Madonna e até a semana que vem com mais um De Frente com Gabi. Até lá.